Chapter 10, Landslides and Slope Failure. In this chapter, we will learn about mass wasting and the human impact on mass wasting, the factors that influence slope failure, and the slope failure process. Natural disaster has become an increasingly anachronistic misnomer. In reality, human behavior transforms natural hazards into what would really be called unnatural disasters. Would you live here? If there's no human impact caused by a natural phenomenon, there's no disaster. January 10th, 2005, in a matter of seconds, a 330-foot portion of the slope mobilized, flowed downward, and buried homes and killed 10 people. A resident said, it came down like lava down the mountains. It was explosive, like there was a stick of dynamite in there. Here's a photograph of the Beartooth Mountains in southern Montana. There's a road that travels into the northeastern entrance of Yellowstone and it goes through the Beartooth Mountains. It goes up to about almost 11,000 feet. It's an interesting ride if you ever get a chance. The terrain here is very steep and susceptible to slope failure. Along the sides of the road, you will see where the Department of Transportation has installed measures to keep the rocks from falling onto the road and closing the road, which does happen. There is an area on I-40 in North Carolina and Tennessee that it actually experiences frequent rock slides. And when it does happen, it usually closes parts of the interstate for days, weeks, sometimes only hours. Where do you see the areas of the highest risk for slope failure? And what do these areas have in common? Gravity moves the materials down a slope. Friction acts to prevent or slow the movement of material down a slope. The steeper slopes are more likely to fail. Think of a slide on a playground. The steeper it is and the smoother the slide, the faster it's going to go. Well, the same thing with slope failure or landslides. Steep slopes in Venezuela allow material to wash into narrow canyons that funnel debris toward coastal cities. The bare patches are locations where landslides have occurred. There are two components of gravity that influences slope failure, parallel to the slope and perpendicular to the slope. The steeper the slope, the larger the component of gravity parallel to the slope, making it more likely the object will move downhill. Just makes sense. A small amount of water holds grains together, makes them a bit more sticky. Dry sand slopes will fail above angles of about 35 degrees. Too much water actually forces the grains apart. Too much water promotes instability. Very wet sediment flows like a liquid. Excess water reduces cohesion between grains and allows them to move more freely. It adds weight to a slope and water supports some of the weight of overlying material, reducing perpendicular force on slope and reducing friction that counterbalances gravity. An example would be there's a higher risk for landslides in the Appalachian Mountains than in the Western United States, where the slopes are steeper. Why? There's more precipitation in the Eastern United States. The addition of water to the slopes with loose materials increases the likelihood of failure. 
Factors influencing slope failure. The Venezuelan landslides. This is the view from the Caribbean Sea. The mountains with the city, the mountains with the city of Carabalita in the foreground. And look at the steep slopes that feed right into where the city is located. A view up the canyon from Carabalita showing narrow canyon floor and steep sides. You can see that only the tall buildings are not under the debris in these photographs. 16 feet thick deposit on the canyon floor in Carabalita. Single story buildings were buried. Apartments partially collapsed. Over 140,000 people became homeless. The burial of the main road impeded evacuation. Poor city planning, construction standards, building inspections. The cost of the damage was about two billion dollars. Human influence. In Venezuela, very little urban planning. La Conchita, the earlier slide blamed on overwatering of crops above the bluff. In Italy in 1998, it was blamed on poor land management or deforestation. Look at Bangladesh and the deforestation and the continual floods that Bangladesh has now. Logging and forest fires remove protective vegetation. List as many factors as you can that contributed to the debris flow in Venezuela in December of 1999. Can we minimize slope failures? Here's a photograph of this is one way that the DOT is attempting to keep the debris from falling onto the road. Improve slope drainage. Attach the slope material to the bedrock with physical restraints. This is the Beartooth Highway in Montana. You can see it comes around here. There are 82 hairpin curves on this highway. And the slope failure is obvious. There are many places where the DOT has installed measures to attempt to keep the debris off the road. Here's another method. What happened in Venezuela in 99? Unseasonable storms, 36 inches of rain on steep mountain slopes, a series of floods and landslides devastated communities along the coast and killed about 19,000 people. The three-day rainfall total equaled the average annual rainfall in Midwestern United States. The vegetation had shallow roots in the 10 feet thick soil, which was regolith. Cities were located on only flat patches of ground at the mouths of the narrow canyons where the material was funneled. Slurries of dirt, rocks, and water flowed at velocities of six to 30 miles per hour. The flows were fast enough to carry bus-sized particles. And this is one of the rocks that had been carried in the landslide. Slope failure processes, landslides, up at the top. What kind of landslide would you call this? This part here is called the scarp, the scar on the mountainside where the landslide has occurred. Rockfall, rocks falling when dislodged from a cliff or steep slopes as a result of physical weathering 
A rock slide is the rapid movement of a mass of rock downslope along a plane of weakness. A slump is represented here. That's the downward rotational movement of rocks of unconsolidated material along curved surfaces. And this is called creep, the very slow movement of unconsolidated material downslope under the influence of gravity. Mass wasting is characterized by the type of material involved, rock versus regolith, and the manner of movement. In this particular picture, the region is characterized by steep walled narrow canyons with slope angles of 70 to 80 degrees. In May of 99, rocks broke away from a steep slope 150 meters above the canyon floor and tourists were relaxing on boulders around the plunge pool and had no protection from the falling rocks. Rock slides are large scale movements of rock traveling rapidly down a slope along a surface. The water softens the shale below the saturated sandstone and then it slides along the wet shale layer which acts as a lubricant and the slide debris actually has dammed the river. A slump is the movement of material down a slope of a curved slip surface. The debris flow, the material flowing downhill is a chaotic mixture of soil, rock, and water. I'm not sure I'd really want to live right there below a slope such as this. Looks like there's a road right in here, or there was one. This concludes chapter 10.